is Barton Jennings here from Lung and Sleep. In this video, I want to demonstrate to you what's happening when you have inducible laryngeal obstruction, or ILO. Sometimes this is called VCD, or vocal cord dysfunction. However, it's not just the vocal cords causing the problem, so I think ILO is a better name. It's very important, as ILO can mimic asthma, or it can make the symptoms of a patient who has asthma a lot worse. It can also lead to a vicious cycle of dysfunctional breathing resulting in shortness of breath. It's important to recognise this to avoid unhelpful medications such as prednisolone, which won't help but can cause a lot of significant side effects. Sometimes people get some response from Ventolin as it acts as a muscle relaxant. Some clues to the fact that your symptoms may be due to ILO include having a change of voice. Sometimes the symptoms are made worse by talking. They often have a rapid onset, so symptoms get worse quickly, but then they improve quickly. Sometimes they, the symptoms can be exacerbated by strong smells, exercise, uh, the smell of smoke. Patients usually have normal lung function, but there can be some flattening of their inspiratory or expiratory flow volume loops if you look carefully at the lung function test. The best way to diagnose this is with nasal endoscopy, which can often be done in the doctor's rooms. This way, the vocal cords can be directly visualised. The treatment, initially, is with breathing exercises or diaphragmatic breathing, and often patients will improve with this. The next step is to see a respiratory physiotherapist who is trained in laryngeal obstruction and dysfunctional breathing. Now, in this video, I show you the images that we get through the nasal endoscopy procedure. Initially, you'll see the vocal cords, which are moving normally. The patient is then asked to breathe quicker, and you will see the inducible laryngeal obstruction, where the vocal cords clamp shut. Then there's also closure around the larynx, which is above the vocal cords, to the point where the whole larynx area is narrowed and closed, causing the symptoms that this patient experiences. I hope this video helps you understand what's causing the symptoms of inducible laryngeal obstruction. Here you can see the nasal endoscope is sitting just above the vocal cords. You can see the epiglottis and the larynx surrounding. The patient is now just taking some quiet breaths in and out, in and out. And you can see that the vocal cords move a little bit with breathing in and out. They tend to open a bit on inspiration and close a bit on expiration. I then ask the patient to start taking some quicker breaths to speed up. Breath in, out, in, out, in, out. And look at what's happening now. There's significant vocal cord closure, but also closure of the tissues of the muscles around the larynx above the epiglottis. It's relaxed again now. And now the vocal cords are closing quite significantly. I'll just ask the patient now to, to slow down the breathing and take a little sniff to settle the vocal cords and open them up again. During this time, the patient also felt the symptoms similar to the breathlessness that they experience. And there once again is that closure of the vocal cords associated with some closure of the upper airway too.